This is my second. Okay, trying this one. Testing, testing. This is my second. Okay, trying this Echo. one. All right. There. Okay. Easy. That was probably really fun, and that will kill anyone from watching this in the future once it's archived. <laughs> oh well. Now you hear me. Good. Uh, took me a little while to figure that one out. I I apologize. Ah, what am I drawing? That's right, the, the audio wasn't being captured before. Um, I have a friend, uh, Brian, who has a YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Hooded Cobra Commander 788. He reviews uh, G.I. Joe figures from the 80s and 90s when I was growing up. So sometimes I'm feeling nostalgic and I enjoy watching his channel. I think he does a great job. And we're friends now, and uh, sometimes I offer to draw something for him because I like to keep my skills up. It's just an excuse to draw something that's fun, that I remember liking. And uh, so I volunteered to draw a title card for him recently, and he suggested uh, I, I do this particular vehicle, which was apparently called the Mean Dog some sort of G.I. Joe vehicle and uh, yeah I, I didn't have this one as a kid or anything so I had to look at a lot of photos of, uh, of the toy to familiarize myself with exactly what it was and uh, took me quite a few uh, sketches and thumbnails until I had what I liked light boxed it into just a, a rough uh, mainly outline with, with pencil and now I'm uh, now I'm using some inking to uh, make it happen, bring it, bring it all together, um, and I'm starting with anything that's going to represent some motion. I want the motion to be on top of anything else that I draw. Okay, hold on, I've actually got some people in here. I wasn't sure that I have any at this hour, but hello to Jack Pride and Sly Fly Guy. Uh, Sly Fly Guy asks, is it a ray gun? It's more of like a, a, a tank. Uh, this is some sort of a weird fictional G.I. Joe tank. I'm drawing this for a, uh, for a channel. <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> oh, my throat is very dry. Uh, hello. Uh, let's see. Broyhill? Broyhill 12. Hello. Mountain Dew, so I'm not going to bed anytime any soon. So let's say, like I say, I want to want to just throw in some lines in all sorts of different places that represent um, motion. So I've got a rotating gun turret of sorts here. So I'm just going to put some motion lines. Motion lines are uh, not really used that much in comics anymore, but I need some sort of a shorthand to represent what's going on with this thing. So, a few little lines there. Uh, they'll make more sense later. And then I'm going to use my ruler here to uh, throw in a couple things here. Actually, I need my pencil for a moment. Um, thank you, Broyhill. Thank you for the compliment. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just going to use my pencil on the um, drawing board itself right here. I'm going to draw right off. Um, my head's covering it, but I've just sort of drawn a line right off the page. 
I use this line as well. Oh, it's actually going to intersect on the page right here. That's my vanishing point for the for this gun. So now I can uh, drop in a few lines, and they'll all be in perspective. And I want to I want to draw those early on too, so that they cover anything else. I just want anything that indicates motion, so that this this piece has some energy to it. It's uh, something I, I always worry that my art doesn't have enough of it's energy, looseness. So, uh, we'll throw in one more right about there. Okay. Well, it'll sort of represent some gunfire. So let's see, what's what's new? Uh, there's not a whole lot new to talk about, I suppose. Let me think. Okay, now I'm, uh, so I was just using a pretty small um, ink liner to do some of these motion lines because um, I'm not sure how thick I want it to be yet. But I do know that I want the um, uh, sort of cab here in the front to be visually pulled forward more than the background and the outline of everything to, to stand out a little bit more from whatever background I give this probably won't be much of one so um, I'm going to use my fine Pigma brush pen to uh, start doing that some outlines basically to uh, pull everything else out when I uh, get to that stage of throwing in the uh, the detail inside. And if I was a really good artist, well, let's say this. If I was a good artist, then I'd use a ruler to get all these lines really nice and straight since it's for a vehicle. And if I was a great artist, I wouldn't need one. I do need one. I'm not going to use one. I'm going to try to just keep my hand nice and steady. And if I make any glaring mistakes, I will have to clean that up in Photoshop when I color this. Oh, there's a couple more things of motion that I forgot to add. Okay. Let's see. Comics and Stuff joins us. Hello. Uh, up late here working and finally able to watch one of these live streams. Yeah, it's a... Doing it at a pretty strange hour. Did not necessarily expect anyone at this hour. So nice, nice to see all of you. Do uh, in case I haven't made that clear. Very, very, very. Yeah, just very nice to see everybody. So these are tires, and so I won't, I'm going to want them to represent motion. So I'm just going to sort of feather some lines here, and then later when I lay down a, a lot of black for these tires. I'll leave these feathers kind of untouched and hopefully that will uh, indicate some motion. Some really nice loose feathered lines. That's my goal anyway, just explaining the process because I uh, can't think of what else to talk about right now. Don't have a whole lot of stories I can think of uh, in real life. Shameful, right? Uh, do you color your work as well? I'm curious because I'm a digital colorist myself. Um, hello, Anita Bong. Hit. Uh, it's going well. Yeah, it's late for a lot of people. Um, yeah, uh, well, for something like this, uh, comics and stuff, I, I, I will color this, but I'm going to be giving this um, flat colors, uh, not a lot of like rendering or anything, maybe no rendering, um, because it's going to be a, um, a thumbnail image for a friend's YouTube channel, so it won't be too big, so I'll want the colors to, um, to kind of pop. 
Um, so I'll probably use a limited color palette with without like lots of um, gradients or anything because I want it to be very very clear when it's kind of small. Uh, so um, yeah, I do do some coloring. I don't think I'm great when it comes to rendering. I can flat anything. I know how to do rendering. I don't think I'm great at it. I, I, yeah, I, I whenever possible, I, I definitely uh, reach out to uh, other friends to collaborate on that aspect. Um, I have a lot of respect for good colorists because I, I boy, I, I I just find rendering one of the harder things to um, to learn how to do properly. Uh, I've been I, I consider myself a, an expert in Photoshop because I do a lot of graphic design um, in my line of work, uh, marketing. I do, and, and I, I really feel very comfortable utilizing um, Photoshop, but I just don't feel that I quite have that painter's touch that's necessary to do uh, a great coloring job. Um, so I have a lot of respect for, for colorists. Uh, in comics, um, yeah. Rendering and color theory, just to name a few facets of coloring. Exactly, exactly. I, th I think I'd probably be okay to good at color theory, but rendering, I find it uh, pretty elusive to get good at that. Um, not that I don't try every once in a while, uh, which is why, you know, I, a project like this is... Uh, you know, it's not for pay or anything. It's just a volunteer job that I'm trying to just keep in practice and, and do a good job. But I'm, I'm also trying to have fun. Um, there's not a lot of pressure. So, um, you know, there, I may use a couple rendering techniques on, on one aspect or two to if I, if I feel that it's making the uh, piece stronger. But, um, yeah, still something I'm uh, trying to... Learn how to do well. A lot of respect for good colorists. I also have a lot of respect for good uh, letterers. I I think I'm an okay letterer. I, I think maybe better than okay. I, I like lettering, actually. Um, can hear my cats uh, outside. I think they want attention, but it's time for bed. Oh, Shirley says, define rendering, please. Okay, well, when I'm talking in digital terms uh, in Photoshop, like, um, say this vehicle overall is um, like some sort of olive green because it's a military vehicle. Well, I can like sort of lasso, block out like the whole vehicle and then use a paint bucket in Photoshop to turn it olive green, you know, sort of, I define the edges so that I don't draw outside the lines. And if I just do that, um, and like for every element, you know, like the, the, the man's skin, the man's helmet, um, maybe these missiles, the tires, you know, I block out all those different elements on, on, on different layers, surely, and I give them all colors. But that's just flat. That's just called flat because the color is just, boom, the color. But these days, there are really amazing coloring techniques you can use in comic books uh, because Photoshop is so powerful and comic books are printed on really nice paper that can uh, accept these really, uh, you know, complex uh, color palettes. So rendering is when you start, um, you've got that flat color of, of, of olive green, but now I'm going to get like hues of that green that are like much deeper for the shadows and I'm not just going to like put the, put the shadows like hard I'm going to blend it all in you know like the, the guy's face I'm going to have like you know several shades and tones to the shadows on the side of his nose and under his eye etc so yeah that's rendering uh, finding the lighting you might say uh, what time is it here it's a little after midnight here it's like 12 20 so uh, some people would say it's late. To me, it, it's not because I stay up pretty late. So, a lot of times if I do this in the afternoon, that's kind of just when I'm starting my day. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, cool question, Shirley. Thank you. And just because I know the terms does not mean that I'm good at it. Chrissy, my fiance, is good at it. She's uh, she's a painter, so she has a lot of skill. She can translate those skills to Photoshop very well. Um, so, yeah, I consider her much better at uh, coloring than I am uh, for anything, really. <laughs> Two thirty for you, Hollow Nano, huh? Three twenty, three twenty. Wow, yeah, that's pretty late. Why are you up so late? Wow. Artists tend to work all times of the day. Ode to creators. That's comics and stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the art of being unemployed. Uh, that's just me being cynical. I need to be careful because this uh, this drawing has a complex grill, and if I if I'm not careful, I could very easily smear the the black all over the place, and that'll be a pain in the neck to clean up in a Photoshop later. So I'm laying down another piece of paper over it, and uh, I, yeah, you can even see like a little smudge here. But if I did that over here, that would that would look pretty bad. Um, so sometimes when you know that you're drawing over an area that has a lot of wet ink, you might throw down a piece of paper like this. Some artists even will wear like a linen glove or something. I've, I've never been able to uh, get into that habit. I think that would just feel restrictive to me somehow. I wish it wouldn't. That sounds like an easy solution to just throw on a thin glove. Alright, now that I've done that actually, I'm going to go back to using this uh, brush. Insomnia is an art form. That's exactly right. I'm use this brush and try to uh, do the outlines of uh, this foreground component. gentleman that I'm drawing has uh, quite a strange massive helmet but uh, so be it The straighter I can make my lines, the more this will end up ultimately looking like a vehicle. So it's okay to, to round some corners and stuff. That gives it a little bit of energy, but overall I want this to have some pretty straight lines. So this is a wheel. That's a little different. Nice big black wheel. Hmm. What else? Uh, <laughs> comics and stuff says he's going to try to get four hours of sleep before work yes do that definitely at least get four hours take care of yourself thank you for stopping by 
definitely don't expect anybody to necessarily hang out too long tonight. I know that it's very late, almost everywhere. So, uh, just, uh, I do not take offense. I'm grateful for anyone stopping by, saying hello, helping me pass the time while I, while I doodle. Hello, Anja. I'm doing uh, I'm doing all right. I'm hanging in there. How about yourself? Technically, it's early. That is true, Shirley. I'm going to um, go ahead and uh, zoom the camera in on this since I'm uh, working on details. Let me see what I can do. Is that, uh, maybe, maybe that's a little better to watch. <clears throat> I uh, can't necessarily think of uh, what to talk about. Uh, so, you know, if you, if you guys want to hear about anything in particular, if you've got good ideas, should throw those suggestions out. I guess it's enough at the end of the day because I, I uh, feel like I can't think of anything good to talk about. So um, here's something small about this drawing that um, I'll mention. Um, I'm, my goal is that I'm drawing this as though it's driving pretty fast. And, uh, so it, and, and it's sort of two pieces connected by a hitch. So it's, it's tilting. Like the, the wheels on this side are, are definitely firmly on the ground, and the wheels back here on, on the back piece are firmly on the ground. This piece is off the ground. So I'm going to draw the whole bottom here, you know, of, of the tire, but when I get to drawing these tires, I'll actually leave some area um, uninked. And uh, when you do that with feet and wheels um, that are, like, in the process of making contact with the ground, if you... If you if you don't connect them all the way and you indicate a little bit of the ground on either side, um, for some reason it just sort of gives the impression of, uh, of, of motion. It conveys a sense of motion. So, just a weird little trick and I uh, can't promise that I'll do it exactly right, that it'll look right, but that's the goal here. Anja, do you tweet the timing of live stream in advance? No, I don't. I'm sorry. I just sort of do it whenever I can find the time to do it. Um, it's I, I can't find a regular time to do this right now. 
Uh, I, I'm sorry that you missed some. Yeah, I get that from a lot of people. So all I can do is I just try to um, do as many as I can, as, re as you know, just try to do them more and more often. But um, it's it's yeah, I, I I I'm not able to really figure out like a regular time yet. If I ever do, I'll definitely start you know posting that and sharing that. Um, Shirley says to tell people about Japan and Hong Kong. Um, yeah, in three weeks, move that over. In three weeks, I get to head out to Tokyo and then Hong Kong. Uh, I've mentioned before that uh, my fiance is a painter. She had a um, an art show at a gallery in Hong Kong a while back and uh, now that show has ended and we've decided that we're gonna go pick up the paintings that didn't sell uh, in person um, why not right so um, yeah so we're gonna do that and we're making a little bit of a trip out of it because uh, we've been before and we really we really loved our trip, so we're we're basically recreating a trip, but doing some new things this time. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I'm just gonna try to forget some stressors and and try to just have the best time possible. Hope hope that uh hope that happens. Let's see. So, anyway. Hello, Anthony Tortorici. Have some Kobe beef while you're over there. Actually, um, there's a there's another kind of beef that I want to say is uh, Wagyu. And uh, maybe it's the same thing. I forget. Um, but it's it's noted for, for just how well it is marbled naturally. So, it's very expensive, but... I would really like to try some. So, hopefully. We're trying to be frugal on this trip. Probably won't be buying a lot of things. Because uh, when you think about it, it's easy to buy a lot of things online these days. Uh, so it's not as special to, to buy stuff. Souvenirs and such. But um, we're just trying to do sort of experiences. See... Uh, Shrines and various districts, restaurants. Um, not to say we won't spend anything, but we're trying to be frugal. We'll see. We're staying in an Airbnb right in the heart of Shinjuku. Stayed there. Uh, not Shinjuku. Uh, Shibuya, excuse me. Uh, so anyway, I'm excited. Nice pronunciation. Not a lot of people get that Sicilian Ichi first time around. Oh, well, I'm glad I got it right. Thank you. And hello to Shembo. I'm late. What are you drawing? I told a friend that has a um, YouTube channel uh, where he reviews G.I. Joe's that I would like to draw, um, you know, the thumbnail art for him. And... Uh, he, uh, he asked if I would be willing to draw a particular vehicle that is apparently called the, um, what's it called again? The Mean Dog. And so that is what I am at least attempting right now. And uh, just trying to use a few different techniques to indicate a motion. Uh, hopefully it will come through when I'm done. Um, we shall see. We shall see.
Well, we're getting there, little by little. Uh, presumably General Patton's tanks, yeah, something like that. It's, uh, it's all things considered, I guess it's pretty sci-fi, but, uh, yeah. Just trying to straighten out some of my lines as I go, and uh, hope for the best. So I'm using the brush for outside detail, and I'll use a... Uh, a liner for the more technical interior lines. Try to keep those uh, pretty straight. You know what? I'm going to use a pencil first to make sure that I am finding the lines where I want them to be. So it would be a shame to mess up an ink. Have you seen Black Panther yet? I've heard good things, but I'm not sure if I should wait to, wa to watch it at home or if it is worth seeing in the theater. I'd definitely put it um, towards the top third of uh, Marvel movies, uh, if that helps. Um, I don't think I'd quite place it at number one, but um, everybody's favorites are different, right? Um, it's very much a self-contained story. Um, I found there to be likable characters, a very interesting villain that was understandable understood everybody's motivations um, yeah I, I, I thought the themes were were clear I liked it a lot um, I've also liked Ryan Coogler's other movies uh, Fruitvale Station and Creed so I wasn't surprised to like it um, I would say my favorite Marvel movies are um, let me think for a second probably uh, Captain America Winter Soldier and the first Guardians of the Galaxy or probably my like two top favorite out of all of them um, but I'd still put this somewhere within the top third of those 18 movies or so Reese funny face or Reese excuse me I misread that Reese funny face says looking good thank you thank you that's kind um, You guys watch any other live streams? I like live streams personally. Um, my friend Harry Partridge is an animator and he's been doing a lot of live streaming for the past week uh, as he gets ready to uh, complete an animation within a couple weeks ideally. Um, I found that really interesting to watch him at work. I love watching other artists at work. Um, trying to understand what techniques they're uh, they're applying. <sighs> Don't really watch many. I should probably start though. Yeah, well, I mean, it depends. You know, it's it's more just for me. I guess uh, I, I don't go looking for live streams per se. I just. Uh, happen to follow a bunch of artists so when they live stream I, I love catching stuff like that I, I always feel like I learned something let's see Um, since I'm going to um, both Tokyo and Hong Kong, I'm preparing um, episodes of Comic Tropes to uh, actually like record, produce in each city, give it a different like sort of flair, uh, and uh, I want to you know focus on something uh, 
relevant to uh, the local comic scene. So, um, for Japan, tons of options. You know, manga is incredibly popular. Um, just a, a wealth of options for, for what to uh, potentially review for Japan. And I know what I'm going to do now. Uh, but uh, when it comes to Chinese comics, or as they call it, manhwa, uh, there, there is, of course, a comic scene, but um, it, it's, it's very different, very different. And it's, you know, I mean, Hong Kong itself is, of course, just a... Uh, a big city, not a whole country. So um, it's not as big. It's it's not as big. It's a lot harder for me to decide what to um, what to cover. But I think I do um, have that figured out now, and I'm excited about that. Uh, so yeah, it's something I got going on right now. Just planning my episode about Hong Kong comics. Let's see. Anja says, oh, no, I missed a bunch of things. Oh, okay, hold on. Anthony Tortorici says, Creed was spectacular. I'm hopeful the sequel will be just as good. Ah, uh, I'm sure it'll be interesting, but without Ryan Coogler directing, who knows, you know? I don't know who's directing it. I, f I forget, but, you know, fingers crossed. Um... Uh, I missed something about what Jack Pride was saying. Sorry. Um, might be about Black Panther. Anja said, I felt Black Panther to be a pure formula-based movie. Nothing unexpected happens in it, but still recommend in theater for visual treat. I'm not discounting your opinion. I felt that it was very much against any formula that we've seen in superhero movies because it wasn't about an origin. It wasn't about revenge. Uh, it was about very different things. It was, you know, about what it takes to be a good leader. And also just like, you know, for, for a nation that has resources in today's day and age, like what responsibilities does it have, uh, does it owe anything to the rest of the world? As well as a few other things. So I felt that it, it handled quite a few different uh, ideas. Hmm. But that's me, you know? I just got something different out of it than you, I guess. Uh, Anthony says that he doesn't watch many art related live streams, mostly video game live streams, sure. But I'm a big fan of comic tropes. So, th well, thank you, thank you. That's really nice to hear. Um, Jack Pride says, I've had, I've had people compared to Hamlet and The Lion King, so I'm just hoping for a good time with Black Panther. Um, and then a new person joins, uh, Shanus, right? Shanus? Um, Black Panther had an actual villain. Yeah, Killmonger is very well uh, defined with his motivations and his background. He's got a lot of context to him. Hmm. Now, I, I can definitely see comparing it to something like Hamlet, uh, because I think at its heart... Black Panther is actually a a family drama in the kind of like Shakespeare. Shakespeare was melodrama when it was created. It was very over the top um, with its themes and and its flowery speech. And even when it was like you know a a, a tragedy, people spoke very very witty. You know, very very clever and stuff. So anyway. Um, Superhero movies do share some similarities to Shakespeare, and I thought that uh, at its core, Black Panther is sort of a family drama. So, that's accurate to a degree. <sighs> to a degree. You meant it carried a message. Agreed. I definitely think it carried a message, and I, and I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, it... It hit it. I don't think it was a perfect movie, you know. Like I, I don't want to. I, uh, I think that like it, it kept building and building with its ideas, and then like um, in the third act, when it comes time for the confrontation, um, 
it was it was good. It wasn't great. Like it it, it sort of leveled off. Like like what it was doing because you know it just kept introducing new ideas and new ideas and 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 it was exciting. And then like you know in the in the final act, um, I don't think it like falls apart. Um, like I think Wonder Woman is a really good movie, for instance. I think it's a really fun, good movie. But I do think that its third act is not great. I think that Wonder Woman's third act, it the 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 visual effects are too over the top, not well done. They just didn't think it through, and it becomes almost just like a something like out of a video game or something, something um, like a cutscene that you're you're not invested in as much. Um, so it sort of falls apart a little there. I don't think Black Panther's third act falls apart, but I think it just sort of stays level. Like it was getting good, 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 good. Okay, we're just gonna we're just gonna ride this out now. But it's a short third act, so it's fine. Just my opinions. I'm trying not to spoil it for people that haven't seen it. I don't want to get into uh, specifics. Hopefully that's okay. Um, I know this is boring, but I'm going to need to erase some of my pencil work because um, I'm really afraid that it's going to start smudging if I uh, if I don't clean up a little of this. Hopefully what I said makes sense to those that have seen it, and I haven't spoiled it for those that have not. I hope. I'm, I'm not... I'm trying to be respectful. But it has been out for a little while, so hopefully it's fair game to discuss to a degree. It's what's the next big superhero thing at this point? I'm trying to think. Uh, what are your thoughts on Guardians Two? One of my favorites. Uh, that's from Jet Pride. Um, I think that Guardians Two, like I had a blast the first time I saw it, and um, then when I saw it like the second time, um, I it it didn't like quite hit the same notes for me. Um, it, it's good. It's it's good. Um, just just not great for me. Like I, I definitely prefer the first one. I, I have to admit, um, didn't quite hit the same highs that the first one did. But the first one set a very high bar. Like the first Guardians, I, I consider like an absolute blast. It's so much fun, and there's actual issues. I do think that there's a good theme at the heart of Guardians too, but it just feels a little disjointed somehow. Like all the elements are just a little disjointed for me. But, but, but I like it. I like it. I just don't love it. Um, let's see. Uh, Anthony asks, do I like any of the Punisher films? I went back and watched the Dolph Lundgren version. Not a good movie by any means, but definitely an entertaining watch at 2 in the morning. And Jack says, Dolph Lundgren played the Punisher? Yeah, 1989. There have been four people to play the Punisher. In 1989, we had um, the Dolph Lundgren Punisher movie. It's okay. It's okay for what it is. Um, it's kind of a disappointment back then. But when you know what it is going in, you're like, okay, you know, it's a good B, low-budget action revenge type movie. It's okay. It's not super loyal to the source material, but it's so it it's close enough. It's okay. Um... I don't know what year. I want to say like 2003 or 2004. We got the Tom Jane Punisher movie. Somewhere around there. That one's not that great. Tom Jane is a good actor. He, he imbues some, some personality and, and, and heart to the Punisher. But it's just not a very good movie overall. Um, then it was somewhere around, and I'm, I'm guessing with these dates, but like we'll say 2007 or something, they, they did uh, Punisher Warzone. Lexi Alexander... Uh, directed that one, and I generally like her movies quite a bit. Um, I think she's got uh, a lot of style, um, and that movie's very over the top. And I probably like that one the most, with Ray Stevenson playing the Punisher. He went on to play uh, Volstag in the three Thor films, but um, yeah, he played uh, Punisher. That was pretty good. It's it's the darkest, <laughs> but it's 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 not bad. It's not bad. Um, and then uh, of course we've got um, what's his nuts on the the TV Netflix version. Um, Who's the guy that played Shane? Oh, I feel bad for not thinking of the actor's name because he's actually a really good actor. He's probably the the best version of the Punisher so far. 
John Bernthal. John Bernthal. He probably overall hits, but he's had the most real estate to deal with. You know what I mean? He's had like, he was a supporting character throughout a whole season of Daredevil, and then he got a whole like 13 episode show to himself. So he's had the most time to explore that character. But um, he does a good job. He, he's good. I don't think that there's been a uh, perfect iteration of the Punisher on screen yet, but on the other hand, maybe the Punisher isn't like the deepest character, so, you know, maybe there's only so much you can do with him. I was a huge fan of the Punisher in like you know the late '80s and uh, early '90s, but um, eh, not as much anymore. I don't really have any particular affection for the character these days. <sighs> Dolph Lundgren, oh, sorry, no, I misread. Uh, Anthony says, John Bernthal's Punisher always gets me in the mood to read some Punisher. Can you recommend any good runs or appearances? Yes, give me a second. I like the character and concept, but the only version I've read and liked so far was the Dark Reign series by Rick Remender. Good, yes. Uh, Frankencastle is very underrated. It's not what you'd expect out of the character, but there's only so much you can do with a guy that does nothing but shoot criminals with guns. Uh, the short film about the Punisher called Dirty Laundry was pretty cool. Yeah, it was all right. Um, even that the whole... Oh, the Frankencastle part of the run throws you off, says Anthony. I like that, but I'm, uh, I'm biased. Like, Rick is, a, Rick is a pal, and I love his work. I, I, I think he's really clever. I, uh, so um, his ideas really speak to me, but that's part of why I like him. So. Um, yeah, his first miniseries is is really good, um, and I liked uh, the issues of his first regular series that uh, Eric Larson uh, illustrated when he sort of befriended a family of ninjas, learned some ninja techniques. Uh, that was kind of cool. It, um, and then he also at that point was, I think... I think it was his regular series where he first met Microchip and Microchip's son. Uh, and, and they all sort of went up against the Kingpin. That was kind of interesting. Uh, the, so the, the early issues of his first regular series. Um, what else was good? I mean, when I was a kid, I liked the art that Jim Lee did in the early issues of Punisher War Journal. But those stories are pretty, pretty dumb, actually. Like, he's just, like, just being a globetrotter, like, going all over the world. And, like, you know, he's fighting with Wolverine in the Savage Land one day. And then he's riding a jet ski in Hawaii the next. I mean, the stories are kind of average. But the, the art, I was a big fan of at the time. And I'm a big fan of um, John Romita Jr., uh, especially in the <laughs> 90s and early 2000s. <laughs> so his work on Punisher Warzone was pretty good. I'm glad you appreciated the art because my friend Tony Moore did the art. So again, I'm I'm biased and I and I flat out acknowledge that. But that's also like you know that's why I don't review um, certain things or when I do I I make a disclaimer. You know like when I've discussed uh, Walking Dead and Invincible, I I make I make it clear that, like, I'm trying to be unbiased, but acknowledge that I do have bias.
Um, I think I've mentioned before, it's not a big secret, that I um, proofread The Walking Dead. I'm not the editor, but I'm a, one of the proofreaders. Um, I met someone recently, and uh, we were all having a conversation, and uh, this person, like, mentions uh, that the only show that they watch is... Um, the Walking Dead. And my fiance goes, oh, Chris uh, works on that comic book a little. And, you know, that was nice of her to uh, say that because I don't like to toot my own horn, but it was nice of her to say that. And uh, and the person just goes, eh, I don't read comics. <laughs> and that was just it. I was just like, okay. You like the show. Couldn't care less that there's a comic that it's based on let alone that this person works. I mean, we're just trying to find common ground to have a conversation. <laughs> okay. I made a mistake. Uh, where is my magical exit? Six whole people. One o'clock my time. Probably, excuse me, later for many of you. Maybe it's earlier for someone. If it's the next day. Very kind of you six people to uh, spend some time with me while I fiddle about. How do you feel about the old What If series Marvel used to put out? Looking back through my collection, those are always the ones I reach to for a fun and quick read. Absolutely, that's fun. I mean, it's basically an anthology series. And I love anthologies in general. Uh, as in, yeah, you're gonna, it's gonna be hit and miss, but, you know, I thought the average on that was pretty good, you know? Uh, I think in general, the, the people that were writing those stories were, were pretty passionate about them. Like, you know, they, they, they felt like they had a cool, fun idea and, and they weren't being, like, reined in, really. They could just do almost whatever they wanted. Uh, I, I like What If quite a bit. Now, the trick is, of course, you can, like, burn through ideas really fast and there's only so many Marvel stories to sort of do a what if to, you know, like, and at a certain point, you have to give it a break. You have to say, okay, we've kind of explored all the big events. And, you know, now it's time to give it a rest for a while. Let let its batteries recharge, in a sense. But uh, yeah, what if is uh, often a very, very fun title. And if anyone doesn't know what that is, what if just uh, is, it's the idea, as it almost sounds in its title, it says, what if instead of, you know, what happened in the stories that, that we know happened, there was this one small change, like where would, where would everything have gone with this one sort of butterfly effect thing? So it's like if, you know, what if Sp Spider-Man never got bitten by that bug. You know, what if there was no Spider-Man in the Marvel Universe? And it'll sort of explore that idea, you know? Or, uh, I don't know. What if the Avengers never found Captain America? Well, both of those ideas are what if a superhero didn't exist. But anyway, like, the idea is just to explore all sorts of, uh, cuckoo ideas like that. Sadie was sleeping next to your face? That's awesome. Uh, Anita Bonghit says, How was it you became a proofreader? By the way, the person who could care less about the comic is missing out on some good reading material. I agree, but they had zero interest, so I didn't talk about it. I, I don't want to... I'm certainly not going to just talk about myself if no one's interested in... So I just let that one die. Um, uh, in that particular uh, instance, uh, what happened was... Um, 
Robert Kirkman and Tony Moore used to self-publish a uh, comic called Battle Pope. It was uh, a humor action book, uh, and uh, I discovered it. And uh, when it was still new, like I think only one issue would come out, maybe two. And uh, I found it really funny, and I saw a spelling error in it. And I just wrote them simply like, you know, a fan letter saying like, hey, I loved it, blah, 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 this was great, this was great, blah, 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 blah. And then at the end, I was like, oh, by the way, you know, like, you missed this one thing, blah, blah, blah. And uh, Robert just go like, reached out to me and goes, like, here's the next issue, you want to you wanna look for mistakes? Okay. And uh, ever since, he's been forwarding me everything he, uh, he writes. And uh, nowadays, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the only one. It's, it's not like my job or anything. He's got editors and he's got other people he can send the, the proof to. But, uh, but anyway, that's how it happened. Uh, that was back around like 2000. Holy moly, that's a long time. Yeah, that must have been 2000. Wow. But um, I guess I've never really leveraged it into an editing job or anything. So I've just been too busy, I guess. Maybe I should. Maybe I should enter comics as an editor. Maybe uh, we'll see. Who knows? The sketch looks excellent. Well, thank you. That's so nice of you to say. Thank you, Shirley. I appreciate the support. Just having fun, more or less. Learning. Is this? Oh, this isn't my good brush. <laughs> I grabbed the wrong brush. Much better. I really should just dispose of a pen or a brush when uh, it starts to die, but I guess I always think I'm going to get a little more life out of it, and I keep it to the side. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, this isn't working. Stop meowing, Milo. Go to sleep, cat. I always wanted a uh, comic book spinner rack growing up because that's how I first discovered comic books was on spinner racks at uh, um, convenience stores. And uh, by the uh, by the end of the 90s, you couldn't find those anymore um, because they stopped selling comic books. Uh, 
to uh, anything except what they call the uh, direct market, in other words, comic book stores, bookstores. They stopped selling to grocery stores and convenience stores and places like that that used to carry comics. So finding a um, spinner rack became difficult. Places just threw them out, etc. I just didn't need them anymore. Um, so I always wanted one, and they've just started carrying them again in, in a catalog called Previews, which is where comic book stores order all their stuff from, all their inventory. Um, and I would really love to have one um, on, on my the set of comic tropes, start filling it with some of the comics that I review and will review. I just think that would be kind of fun and visually interesting. But uh, it's $300 for the wire racks that are specifically built comic book size. And uh, that's, uh, that's not cheap, so can't get one right away, but I would really like to get one at some point. So don't be surprised if someday the show has a big old spinner rack on it. We'll see. I have a lot of ideas for what I'd love to do with the channel if I had money, but uh, try not to get ahead of myself, you know? Because uh, to produce something really amazing takes a lot of money and... <coughs> <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> I'm sorry, I surprised myself. Dry throat. Um, the channel doesn't really make much money. So... Trying not to get ahead of myself. But anyway, I always have ideas of things that I could do someday if it has some money. So you've been with Kirkman since the beginning. Nice. Uh, pretty close to it, I guess. Pretty close to it. But uh, I'm not an employee. Uh, I don't work for Skybound or anything. So My knowledge is, is limited. Uh... And we really don't chat much anymore. Um, but if we see each other uh, at a convention, definitely say hi and talk for a while. Uh, so that's fun. I'm very happy for him for all of his success. Like he's had, he's he's a smart guy. He's a really charming guy too. So yeah, it's nice to see him have that level of success. Outcast is very good. I'm excited for um, uh, Oblivion Song, his next book. I think it'll be pretty interesting stuff. Uh, let's see. Uh, Anja says, is there any particular art form that should be chosen for a particular genre in comics. Hold on, let me let me par parcel this one out because I'm not sure I understand yet. Uh, is there any particular art, art form, that should be chosen for a particular genre in comics? I mean, I suppose so. I suppose, like, you know, if you're doing a, a horror book, you need to have somebody that, that's really good at, like, you know, expressionism and, and throwing down lots of heavy blacks whereas you know if, if they're doing a you know a superhero book or a drama it requires a different style as well but I'm not sure if that's exactly what you're asking um, I'm, I'm sorry I'm, I'm I feel like I didn't understand the question very well mm -mm. I'm trying
We'll take a look at the chat in just a sec. All right, let's see. Uh, Anita Bong Hit says, Walking Dead is the reason I read comics. It was my gateway drug. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Oblivion Song looks good. His video on explaining the concept got me hooked. Glad to hear it. And Anthony says, I have the Outcast paperback sitting on my bookshelf. I never got around to reading it. Thanks for reminding me. Outcast is good. Outcast is really good. Um, Robert can write all sorts of stories, and, and he's got a lot of passion for different types of stories. Uh, but he also sticks with things, you know. He, uh, he, wrote, he wrote now Invincible for a long time, and, and he's written uh, Walking Dead for almost as long, so it's, it's, it's impressive. No more questions. Okay. Switch to my smallest brush and try to give this guy some facial details in what's quite a small area to work in. My brain is functioning at a quarter speed. It's 4.15 over here. Oh, my God, 4.15. Dude, you should get some sleep. I'm not going to be offended if you need to get sleep. I should be getting sleep. Not trying to tell anybody to leave, though, because I'm grateful for the company. Oh, I 
need to get in close to do some of this. Um, buddy of mine gave me the first trade of the Wicked and the Divine. It wasn't my cup of tea, but it wasn't bad. That's from Anita Bonghead. I haven't heard of that book, I don't think. Hello, meme lord of all Pepe. Wow, that's, that's quite a name. This particular character has uh, quite a strange outfit. He uh, seems to basically just be wearing a uh, a vest and trousers. Not a uh, not much of a military uniform. A uh, sleeveless vest, no shirt. Just uh, hey. This is me. This is what I wear to battle. G.I. Joe seems to have had a pretty lax dress code for a military organization. I think we can all agree. Uh, but I guess it worked for them, huh? Eh, and when you've got so many specialties, I guess it's easy to uh, identify who does what. Oh, uh, Shipwreck? The guy that dresses like a He's in the YMCA. Well, he's our sailor. The guy that's dressed up in uh, firefighter gear. That's that's our firefighter, etc. Guy that we let dress like a like a samurai. That's uh, that's our samurai. I guess I've gone quiet again. Sorry, when I start doing lots of little details, I uh, I can lose track of time and stuff and just veg out. Uh, let's see. Anthony says, I haven't been on a mailing list for a comics title since Scott Snyder's New 52 Batman run. Now that I have more free time to read comics, I don't even know where to jump back in. I guess that's not the worst problem a person could have. I would just say look for what's well reviewed or go with characters or creators that you like and you can always go backwards or just get a trade. Um, 
Yeah, Scott Snyder's New 52 Batman run wasn't that long ago. It's like, what, six years? It's nothing. Um, I've started reading Tom King's uh, Batman run, and I like it. It's it's good. It's really good. And I haven't read Batman for since Grant Morrison started uh, pre-New 52. So um, I was able to jump in with, uh, with his Rebirth stuff and... and made sense to me. So uh, that's a pretty good jumping on point. <sighs> Tell you what guys, um, I will finish some details on the this front cap part, but this part I will uh, probably do tomorrow since it's getting late and it's already been almost an hour and a half, which I'm surprised by. Flew by. Doesn't feel like I've been working that long, but it is late. And uh, even though I don't think I feel it, I'm sure that the work tomorrow when I'm more well rested will look even better so yeah decent start decent start Tell you what, um, can't promise obviously that I'll uh, get to any particular review anytime soon, but if I could review any artist or writer, not a character or a run or an idea, just specifically like, you know, a uh, an artist or a writer, so some creator in comics, who should I uh, who should I cover? Because I'm always uh, always looking for new ideas. I've got I've I've got my calendar like roughly blocked in through the end of the summer at this point. But uh, yeah, yeah. Good luck with that, Anthony. I'm I, Tom King is really good. If you and if you like his stuff, um, check out uh, the twelve issue Vision series he did for Marvel and his um, current. Uh, uh, Miracle Man series at DC. Tom King seems to be like the real deal. New newish writer that has lots of good ideas. Um, yeah, I like his work quite a bit. Good night, Shirley. Thank you very much for, for watching. Appreciate it. I don't like how this looks at all. Do not like it. What to do, what to do. Now first clean it up. Let's see what can be fixed. I'm glad I live in the age of Photoshop where I can make some pretty big changes. If anyone happens to watch this live stream later, uh, is in not necessarily right now, but you know it, it obviously gets archived. And uh, if you see this before March twentieth, twenty eighteen, uh, I'm going on that trip to Japan and Hong Kong, and I uh, I have hardly any money. I I just I mean I had enough to take care of the trip, but I don't have much in the way of spending money, so. If anybody's interested in any of the um, pieces I've done before on the live stream or uh, 
potentially commissioning me for just a sketch. I can't do like, you know, a full detailed illustration between now and the 20th. But um, if you get this message between then, um, I'm, I'm happy to uh, sell any of my sketches at a, at a reasonable price. Um, I just uh, would love to have a little bit of money for, for the trip. And uh, I don't have much right now, which is frustrating. Oh, this isn't the right pen to use. Maybe this one will be better. Anyway, yeah, um, feel free to reach out. Um, above me is my Instagram and Twitter, uh, so you can reach me on Twitter. You could go to the uh, Facebook Comic Tropes page. Uh, send a message there, I answer all of those. Um, send a message through YouTube. But uh, if by any chance there's a piece I've done before that you're interested in, like let me know because I'd happily uh, make a deal just to have some money in Japan and Hong Kong. Um, I, I have some other pieces that I've done before too, some paintings and stuff like that. So, yeah. Be happy to sell some of my art. <laughs> We're getting close to finishing the front foreground type stuff. I have to stop in here more often. I normally go back and watch the archive videos, but being able to chat is pretty nice. That's Anthony. Yeah, well, I love chatting with it. anybody in here. I try to answer whatever uh, gets asked. Um, sometimes I can start to veg out and really uh, get lost in, in the drawing. So every once in a while I do get quiet, um, and I'm, I'm a bad host, but... Uh, it's it's just me getting lost in the art, not me getting bored or disinterested in uh, talking to anyone out there. Uh, hopefully that's clear. At a Comic Con this weekend, I'm gonna go to uh, the Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle. Uh, probably won't be buying anything, as I say, I don't really have any money, but fortunately, I can get a pro badge, so I uh, did so. And uh, it's always fun just to look and to say hi to uh, uh, friends, meet new people. Um, so I still enjoy going to Comic Cons just to take pictures and talk with friends. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good weekend. Plenty of uh, friends from out of town that I'll get to uh, interact with. Uh, that's my favorite part of conventions.
I like the art as well. No clue what you have on hand, but I'd be happy to purchase one of your pieces if it supports the show. I'll message you sometime. Yeah, please do. Um, so, please do. Hopefully we can work something out. Whew. All right, I just rubbed my eye without thinking about it. That's usually a personal sign that I'm uh, actually getting tired. So, probably getting close to uh, being able to wrap this up for the day. Getting close. Down to five folks. Five folks, and only Anthony's talking, so there's a, there's every chance that I've put four people to sleep tonight. I, my my soothing dulcet tones have uh, uh, made them feel calm, and safe, and they've drifted off to slumberland. Uh, that's fine. That's primarily what this show is known for, is helping people ease their way into slumberland. Sorry, I know you usually just sort of see the back of my head through this camera here. Um, I've never found like where I can position this so that you can sort of see my face as I look. And I could just turn this off completely, but then I feel like that's a little weird since you know probably what I look like from my show. But if you can't see my face and you just hear my voice, maybe that's a little weird. So hopefully like the occasional glimpse uh, if you're watching this works um i can't really lower the camera so that it's like looking up at me because then it would be right on top of the artwork uh it's something i i, I think about sometimes and, and i know i just sort of like go in and you just sort of see a little bit of my head and like the light is shining right on my forehead at least i don't have a bald spot that i'm like embarrassed about i got a full head of hair thank goodness <laughs> um but that probably has a pretty weird angle to, to be looking at me uh, in that little... I also try to keep that, like... Uh, that's why I try to keep this frame kind of small. Because if it was any bigger, it would probably be upsetting. <laughs> I wonder if anyone ever watches these live streams without having watched uh, comic tropes or something. If they're just like, oh, 
just somebody drawing. That would be interesting to me. I, I tend to think that's not likely, but it's certainly possible. I'll have to fix that. That thumb looks terrible. The whole hand looks terrible. I'll fix that in Photoshop. It's small. I think we're definitely on the same page. I'm about to head off to bed as well. Have a good one and good luck. It was fun chatting with you for the first time. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining us, Anthony. Appreciate it. Uh, Anja asks, is there any comics or character that debuted after 2000 and made a big impact in the industry? After 2000, um, uh, well, I guess it depends on how big an impact you mean. I, I certainly think that um, Kamala Khan and Miles Morales are popular characters that will be around for a while, and I think that you know Miles Morales is getting his own movie theatrically released at the end of this year. That could make some some waves. Uh, it, both characters are sort of legacy heroes, as in they, they're derived from existing heroes. So I don't know if I can ever say big impact and say, like, it changes the industry. But I think the fact that there are these new teen heroes, and they're so likable, and they're cool, and, and they're, you know, they're, they're different than what would have come out even 20 years ago, because Kamala Khan is, you know, a Muslim from Jersey, and... Uh, Miles Morales is uh, Afro-Latino from, uh, what, Queens? Is he from Queens? I think he's from Queens. I, it's hard to remember. Uh, so those are kind of popular. I'm trying to think of, like, a character or a comic that, that made a big impact since 2000. I think Saga has the potential to at some point. I think that that's a really strong comic with a really interesting story that that could someday make that kind of impact um, hmm. trying to think of like indie stuff that maybe like hit mainstream awareness um, yeah not a lot coming to me um, and that's that's definitely sort of a problem that, uh, you know, that there aren't, like, ideas that are making a huge impact. Um, I think that, well, wait a minute. Maybe I'm missing the obvious one. Walking Dead. Walking Dead made a huge impact on the industry in a lot of ways. That's a very popular comic, a massively popular TV show. Um for a long time now. Uh, the comic is like made all sorts of like sales records uh, in in terms of like, you know, like best selling black and white comic. You know, the, their trades are massively successful. It's been translated into tons of different languages. And I think it's highlighted the ability to be very successful as a with a creator owned book. Uh, I think a lot more creators have gone, oh, Walking Dead is a big, big hit. Time for me to give some serious thought to doing a creator-owned thing instead of just working for a page rate, um, you know, to own my own stuff. So, yeah, you know what? I would say Walking Dead is probably the biggest uh, impact post-2000, a comic book or character. Uh, great question, Anja. Um, if somebody can think of something even bigger than that, or even like on a par, 
you know, speak up. But but I think that Walking Dead absolutely should count. Like that's a really popular title. That's gotten a lot of new readers into comics because of how popular the show is. Um, and it's made horror uh, quite popular in comics. You know, that we saw a lot more horror comics uh, after the success of Walking Dead. So, um, you know, because that, that was a genre that was not in high demand uh, in comics at the time that it came out. That's part of what made it work, was nobody else was doing um, horror comics at the time. I mean, maybe there was some stuff like Avatar Press. I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. I think, I think that that should count for a good answer. Show that I'm paying attention to the industry. I'm trying to think of what else uh, might be out there that, that's uh, made a big impact. Um... Whoops. All right, so I'm going to just bring this up. So there's the little guy. Like, this is really tiny. Like, that's that's the size of a quarter or something. That's, that's the main character, Wild Card. And uh, he was known for um, breaking anything he touched. So I'm having him break the, uh, the main gun here. Uh... But I'll uh, I'll definitely have to clean that up uh, in in Photoshop. That that's not that that isn't looking great. That's too bad. But um, but I can fix it. I can fix it. Um, I think that's all I'm going to do for now because I'm feeling like I'm not really uh, doing my best work right now. Uh, it's sort of making some mistakes. I'm reaching across the drawing. Give me just a second. I'm backing the zoom out. So there's the whole piece. That gives you a better idea of like uh, how small, you know, like this guy's head is smaller than my thumb. Some reasonable detail, but um, didn't do a great job on this hand. That'll have to be cleaned up. And uh, hopefully some of these lines that didn't seem as straight when you're really, really zoomed in. When you're zoomed out, it doesn't look as bad. But I'll touch it up a little in Photoshop, too. Anyway, that's what I'll probably do for tonight. And then tomorrow I'll uh, draw this back cab portion that has the main gun. Um, fortunately, a bunch of this will be thrown into black. So. But, uh as in shadows. Um, yeah, this was fun. Um, so I'm looking at one line here. It's driving me nuts. So I'm going to correct that. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, so tomorrow when I pick this up, I can fix that. Tomorrow at what time? Oh, good question. Give me a second to think here of what I've got to do tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's Wednesday. I'm going to record an episode. It'll be a lot earlier. Um, I will probably come in here somewhere around... And I can't promise this, but it will probably be around 3 p.m. Pacific Coast time. 3 p.m. Pacific tomorrow, I will probably... Uh, so, basically in like 13 hours or so, I will probably uh, get back on and, and wrap this piece up. Try to try to make some corrections and make it look, bad, look good, maybe look better. Um, it's been fun, though. Thank you all for uh, showing up. Uh, small room, but it was nice to chat with so many of you, see some new faces. That That's great. Um, and uh, just wish me luck uh, fixing this up. And again, if you're watching this when it's archived, 
um, and you've seen it before, March 20th, 2018, uh, I'm about to leave on a trip for Japan and Hong Kong, and while I've paid for the flight and hotel, I have pretty much no more money, so I'd be happy to sell any artwork you've seen in previous streams, possibly do a commission for like something like small. If that's something you're interested in, please reach out to me. That would be appreciated. All right. Thank you, Anja. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, see you later. Keep reading comics.